Oops, hold on. Okay. Wait, are we starting the, the video over? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Alright, we're about to start. Alright, here we go. So, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, I'm Eumius. I was one of the authors of this test. Uh, tree's, tree's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Okay, wow, I had my mic muted. Hi, I'm Tree. I also made this task. And I'm ZSG, I'm just commentating. So you guys want to talk about what this task is, uh, the story behind it, all that stuff? Sure. Uh, this task aims to beat the game in as few items as possible. And currently, the fewest number of items you can get and still finish the game is 16. So the reason we made this task was that when we first started working on it, the RTA run for this task was like 4 hours and I think 43 minutes long. And it had a mistake in it that cost over an hour. So it was pretty bad. And it's a cool enough category that we felt it deserved a good run, so we decided to task it. Should I mention what all the 16 items we get in this are? Now? Uh, sure, go ahead. Alright, so items we get But don't, are... don't, don't, uh, explain why we get them, though. Leave yeah, that in the three. Yeah, I'm not gonna explain that yet. Uh, items we get are magic, ocarina, deku stick, light arrows, deku mask, zora mask, blast mask, song of time, song of healing, sonata of awakening, new wave bossa nova, both to order, Adala's Remains, Goat's Remains, Gyrog's Remains, and Twin Mold's Remains. Yeah, so there's a lot of normally pretty important items that were left off that list. Yeah. And that'll be interesting to see them skipped. I think the biggest ones that are really left off the list are things like uh, Fire Arrows, Bottle, Quiver. Goron Mask. <laughs> hey, that's really important casually. Yeah. Uh, what time are you at right now? Uh, 3.15. Okay. I'm like, I'm like only two seconds behind, that's not a big deal. Of the curved back walking. Alright, so the beginning of this task is still regular old MM, so it's a little bit on the oh. slow side. <laughs> Cycle 1 is pretty standard. There's some stuff in it though. Like we have, we can do some pretty neat movement when we have control, and I tried to make Night 3 as entertaining as I could. Curved backwalking is when you're backwalking, if you hold very slightly left or right, uh, it'll curve Link's backwalk by just a tiny bit. It helps sometimes so we don't have to change angles as much. Why English? Why is this on the English version? So, this run is not actually possible. 
the Japanese version. At least 16 item is not possible on Japanese. Yeah, lowest you can go on Japanese is 18 items because of English exclusive glitches. It's English, so we can follow the story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Curve Backlong is not MM exclusive. You can do it in OOT too. Is side hopping English only? Yes. Yes, OOT 2, the sequel to OOT, coming out next year. You want to talk about that weird movement Deku was doing? Oh, uh, so that's called a Z slide. Uh, essentially, it maintains whatever speed you have by alternating between pressing Z and having released every other frame. And in OOT, you saw it probably a lot when he was doing the no doors tasks. In that game, he just sort of slides along. In this game, he actually has like a running animation that changes based on how fast he's moving. Ooh, I haven't seen using that flower before. It's slightly faster. This room actually has like an obnoxiously precise jump in it. I think collectively it took us like three or four days to get this. Nice. And, like a couple thousand re records. Yeah, so the Deku spin there, it lets you skip the title text by the flower, and it gives you enough speed to clear that gap. That movement was really yeah. cool. So here, we're advancing the game one frame at a time by pausing because there's a cutscene here. The cutscene can't load unless it has two uninterrupted frames, so by doing this we can reach the loading zone to clock down and skip the cutscene. And that was a reset. If you reset as soon as you enter clock town, you skip a little cutscene. Yeah, it saves like... I don't know exactly how much, it's a few seconds. So, for cycle one, pretty much have to get to midnight of the third day to get into the clock tower. So, if you want to go just make it night of the third day as fast as possible. And to do that, we're going to talk to Grandma and advance to third day. And then the Scarecrow will help us get to the night.
And so this will make it night of the third day. This is just to try to end the cycle as quickly as possible. Yeah, I tried to make this night as entertaining as I could. So we're gonna be having some fun playing around with movement. Ooh, nice. The invisible scene. Uh oh. This section of Clock Town is for Trev. Oh. <laughs> There's a cutscene in North Clock Town when you enter it for the first time, but it only happens if you enter it from Clock Town. And that wastes some end game time, so it's faster to just uh, backlog past that guard and enter through Termina Field. Yeah, you're normally not supposed to be out here in Termina Field uh, during cycle one, but you can backlog through that guy. That was a good song. The way you can curve side, side hops going up that slope is actually really cool. Deku's movement is pretty weird. It's kind of fun to mess with. Since he's the only form that can actually untarget and change his angle midair. <laughs> yeah, heart pieces and heart containers do count as items, so they will be skipped. Yeah, so this part, you have to wait for midnight of the third day, so all the messing around is just uh, for fun, because you got to kill some time anyway. Except for getting magic, magic is required, and that's the first item, right? Yeah, so one item. You can glitch into the clock tower as Deku. At least not yet. Soon. Deku's head just kind of shrinks down for some reason. That, that's a great that. animation, I've never seen that. Door counts a lot higher than two.
Magic skip is possible, but it requires a second file with a bunch of items you wouldn't normally or normally have, so it's not really doesn't really reduce the item count. Yeah, it was ruled that uh, any unique items on additional files have to also be counted into the final item count. You want to talk about how magic skip works, just because it's uh, an interesting oh thing. So magic skip essentially you have to transfer a powder keg between files and you do like a precise jump as Daku while carrying the powder keg up to the clock tower on first day and when you pause and unpause the game the timer the game timer actually advances but nothing else does so you have to pause for a great many hours to make it midnight of the third day and then you go into the clock tower and throw the powder keg at Skull Kid and he drops the ocarina yeah, I think it's been estimated to be like between 15 and 18 hours of pause buffering. <laughs> it's uh, it's an experience. Yeah, and if somehow uh, it's ever possible to get a powder keg without a separate file, that would be in low percent. Yeah. <laughs> and this task will increase in time by 16 hours. Hey, Yumius, you want to task 15 item low percent? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're up to three items now is uh, Ocarina and Song of Time. Still better than Gwei hovering. I don't know about that. How long would the Gwei hover and Max Percent Child take, anyway? Probably like four hours. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Actually, probably more than that. Probably like six or seven. <laughs> Those are the best kinds of glitches. <laughs> Shout outs to Twilight Princess, where you can skip items by holding a rupee for like eight hours and go through a wall. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Uh, resetting after the song of time is faster. And this yeah. case, it skips a cutscene as well. Yeah, a fairly lengthy cutscene, too. And this guy's gonna give us the Daku Mask and Song of Healing, which will put us up to five items. So after this cutscene is pretty much when the action begins.
The commentary is totally pre-recorded. Yeah, we're just predicting everything you say right now. Yeah. We recorded this like a week ago. Like the commentary is live, but or the commentary is pre-recorded, but the gameplay is live. <laughs> Tool assisted commentary, yes. Alright, so finally all the cutscenes are done and it's time for some actual action in this run. Yeah. So we've got a journey to go on first. So what's the first thing we're gonna do here? We're gonna make our way over to the swamp. There's a cutscene blocking the swamp entrance, but we have a way to skip it. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna be seeing a lot of that. So we pull the ocarina on the edge of the cutscene trigger and play a song of double time, and that skips the cutscene. It's very important we skip it like that as well, and not by just going past it with time stop. Yeah, that way the cutscene actually uh, goes away completely, whereas other methods of skipping it will just bypass the trigger, but the trigger will still be there for later. Yeah. And it's also worth noting, uh, this is, uh... This is an in-game time segment since we need to get the blast mask later, which starts at 12:20. So up until then, this is in. We're just on in-game time, and we're going to save in-game time. So I jump on the lily pad as human, that makes it start sinking, put on deck mask, go on to see up, and that gives us return A. And that just lets you keep some um, features of being in see up mode, but you can still move around. advantage of that is that there's this big octa blocking our way, but with return A we can just go right past him. Yeah, that big octa you're only supposed to kill by doing the side quest where you go in a boat and kill him with the boat. But that takes way too long, and I think you get the picto box from that too, so you gotta skip that. So, yeah, um, picked, a, picked a box and the real, like, the bottle. Uh, there's a cutscene in the front palace of, the front entrance of Deku Palace. And we don't like cutscenes, so we gotta go in another way. So this saves in-game time, just not having to watch the cutscene. Yeah, since you gotta waste uh, um, in-game time anyway. Entering Deku Palace from the top. There's another kind of ridiculous strat in here to save in game time. Those who have seen two paws may remember this strat. So you have to flip into that corner with the Deku spin, get on the door frame, and then when you back up on the door frame, this guy's shooting Deku nuts at you. And so. Uh, by damage boosting with one of the Deku nuts like that, we can skip turning into human and turning back into Deku, which saves like two seconds of in-game time. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> Say the dragonfly hover is probably not feasible for a human to do. No, not even close. You might get it eventually, but it's not going to be anywhere near consistent. Or fast. Yeah. So, Sonata, it's one more item. Are we at six now? I think so. Okay. There's someone in the chat will be keeping track. Yeah, for the purpose of low percent, everything that you get is considered an item. So, anything that, say, you would get in 100% would count as uh, something for low percent. So that's why magic and songs and all that kind of stuff is counted. Not just sea items. Uh, we need to make our way back to Clock Town now for the Blast Mask. So we're gonna do this Return A trick again with the lily pad. Yeah, and so one thing that low percent skips that is usually a pretty convenient item is a uh, song of soaring. So no song of soaring this run. It's gonna be, you know, walking around. Yeah. Luckily we're a tassel. Our movement is pretty good. Wait, is it lagging? Is there something wrong with the frame rate? It was messing up for briefly, but I think it's fine now. And so because we have to go back this way, that's why it was important that we actually completely remove the cutscene with the uh, cutscene skip. If we didn't completely get rid of it, we'd have to watch it on our way back out. Nice, Hess. And since the Blast Mask starts at 1220, we've, even after all that, we've still got some downtime. Oh my god, a first person hiss. <laughs> yeah, where else would you ever see this trick? And so all this in-game time waiting is for this right here. Yeah. The blast this mask one of the hero lady gets rubbed. Oh, please tell me you hit him with the grass. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it was that a cutscene skip too? Oh, yeah. uh, it skips like part of the fade out, I think. Yeah, it skips part of the fade out, and it saves like half a second or something. 
And so the blast mask. Talk to me about the blast mask. Uh, the blast mask. It's uh, you can use it as much as you want, but it has a 15 and a half second cooldown. And so we're gonna see the consequences of that right here. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, to go into more detail about why the Blast Mask is gotten, so, if you want to get bombs or bomb chews, like, any kind of explosives is really important in this run or in MM in general, but bombs and bomb chews come with the bomb bag, and so if you wanted to get, say, bomb, just bombs, it's the bomb plus the bomb bag, so it's two items. The Blast Mask is only one item, so the Blast Mask is the best... Uh, explosive item you want to get for low percent because you can skip two items and replace it with one at the cost of this yeah but in low percent uh, item count is more important than time so uh, one of the biggest like pretty much the biggest time save we have in this task is just trying to skip last mass cooldowns We work very hard to skip as many as possible. Uh, so someone said, isn't choose one item. In Majora's Mask, uh, choose actually uses your bomb bag, while in Ocarina of Time it doesn't. So in Ocarina yes. of Time, choose is only one item, but in Majora's Mask it's two, just like bombs. Yes, choose are even worse in this game, because uh, you need bomb bag for choose, and you can't get bomb bag without bombs, so to get choose you actually need three items. Yep. I guess we should also explain hovering for those who aren't aware about hovering. Alright. So, so um, when you get the infinite sword glitch, the infinite sword glitch is if you do a crouch stab and interrupt it by doing something like grabbing something or reading some text, and your sword is swinging infinitely, and if, you, if your shield gets hit in the air with the infinite sword glitch on, then you'll start hovering in the air, and you can do that over and over again. And so that's uh, how this is happening. <clears throat> the the explosion is hitting a shield over and over again in the air. And this hover is used to get out of bounds and hit this guy. Yeah, this is extremely important. So if you're familiar with most speedruns, I use this with Song of Soaring to be able to sort of dial statues that they have not activated. Uh, and this we need to save at it for... Some tricks later on. And that's and why so, this is English only. So you can't save so, owl statues on Chippewa. Um, what that's, that owl statue is, is... There's actually this, uh, it's called the Hidden Owl Statue. It's not the actual owl statue in South Clock Town. It's actually this completely separate owl statue that you aren't supposed to be able to actually get. And so it acts really weirdly. Uh, Iku, it's faster to do the dive with, uh... Staving at the owl because then you don't have to spawn at the mayor's residence since that doesn't have a set uh, set spawn point. It just takes you to the mayor's residence. And that hover over the fence was actually kind of ridiculous. You have to lure the lever as far as possible in order to make it over with only one blast mask cover. No, I will not play the piano.
Nobody say special shout outs. So why not use SODT for Macau cutscene skip? Uh, that cutscene skip only works during the day, so in this situation, it's slower to do that. Yeah, and uh, Macau's actually in a different position on each day. He's farther away as the days advance from the shore, so it's not worth it to skip to later days. Item number seven. So, last masks are mask, Deku mask. That'd be all of our masks already. There's a side effect of saving at the Hidden Owl statue. Uh, if we reset after playing so long time, it would actually take us to the mayor's residence. So sometimes we don't want to do that because we want to end up in South Clock Town and not mayor's residence. And this is one of those times. I think this is the only time we do that in this run, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, it's normally faster to reset after saving, but in this case, we want to do this. You can clip in that door and store sign time here. This cycle has probably one of the most complicated glitches in it. Yeah, hey, you can hess with the blast mask. Uh, the way that works is when you roll, after a certain point in your roll, you get invincibility frames. And to get a hess, you have to essentially do that. You have to take damage at the end of your roll, and the invincibility frames, you just have to cancel the roll, and the invincibility frames last anyways, and then you can hess like that, landing on the ground. Also, what he did with the, the song Out of Bounds there is when you play a song, you void out Out of Bounds. The next time you activate text, the, the song text that was supposed to come up will come up, and that's how that song time text just came up right there. So that's zero with day. Uh, you use Song of Time storage when you ha after saving at the Hidden Owl, it activates a glitch called Zeroth Day. And one of the effects is that it makes it day zero, and the boulder in Milk Road doesn't exist on day zero, so that lets us just walk right into the ranch. It has uh, another use that's very complicated that we're going to be doing here. Mm -hmm. So, the way Zeroth Day works is. Um, like a couple seconds after you save with Song of Time Storage, the game will load the save file you just created. And that has a bunch of different effects. Um, like if you do any equips or pick up any items, that will get undone when Zero Thay activates. So like, your equips will go back to what they were when you saved, or the item you picked up will be removed from your inventory. Uh, if you put on a mask after saving, like a transformation mask. Um, the bite that controls what um, what form you are, it that gets changed back to what it was when you saved, but it doesn't physically change you back into that form. So you're in this weird state where the game sort of thinks that you're a different form than you actually are, and that comes into play shortly. So this is going to be a trick called Weird B. This yeah. is probably the most complicated thing in the run. Um, aliens are here. <laughs> yeah, so... 
It sets it to 5.59 the first, on the zeroth day, and Alien starts like 2.30, and it ends at 5.15. 5.59 is past both of those times, so they appear and die instantly. Good Alien, that was pretty fast. We climbed a Pona <laughs> while restoring our state to Zora, and that gives us blank B on Zora, which is weird B. It essentially takes uh, it takes the value of the word on your B button when you try to use it instead of the actual action. So value of punch is 39, which is highly in loach. Yeah, so um, using the highly in loach, like that's not really what we want to do. What we want, we want to get explode on B as Zora because. Uh, explode as oh my god, so many question marks. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to explode on B Zora because explode has an item, a, an ID number of twenty four. Um, the item with the item number twenty four is milk. So if you use weird B with explode on B, you will drink some milk on your B button, and that will give you a bottle on B. And that's good because that lets you skip getting a real bottle. So we need a way to get Explode on B. Um, you can't just put on the Blast Mask because Zoralink can't put on Blast Mask, so we'll have to do something else to get that. And also that uh, starting at the Mayor's Residence, that's another, that's the side effect mentioned earlier of saving at the Owl Statue while voiding out. Something kind of weird is those lever spawns are actually different between day and night, so... This hover is much less precise in the day. Alright, so in this grotto, we're gonna kill a Deku Baba and get a Deku Stick. We're gonna put on Blast Mask, and then we're gonna pull out the stick and turn into Zora. Uh, for some reason, pulling out the stick lets you keep Explode on your B button for one frame after regaining control of Zora Link, and that lets you use it for Weird B. So and so now, Zora B now, fishing yeah. it. Yep. <laughs> There's a cool trick here we're gonna use to get to the fairy fountain. So, flying Zora. Alright, you start a Zora swim, you hit the shore at like a specific angle and position, and it knocks you into the air, but it doesn't knock you out of the swimming state. So you can just swim through the air and use that to grab a high ledge. Talking to those ISG fairies there was, yeah, just getting ISG. And more hovers. Yeah. Explode B. And so what's going to be going on here is, uh, the fairy fountains are all loaded on the same scene, but only one of them has the actual textures and actors loaded. But all the collision and loading zones still exist. So we're able to hover out of bounds to a nearby one and go through that loading zone, and it'll take us to a different area of the overworld. Also, we're doing twisted backflips and side hops right now. That's not just for show, there's like an actual reason for that. Yeah. The facing angle is important. And it doesn't waste time since we just have to wait on the blast mask anyway. 
Task is about two hours long. Yeah, we got shields, bam. There's not a whole lot to do during blast mask hovers. Yeah. You can skip one hover there by doing that forward side hop jump slash. And we're in a Kana, so I think you can all infer what's going to happen next. Best part of the run. <laughs> So, uh, guys in the chat, uh, do you guys like the Stone Tower Temple music? <laughs> Damage Ice Jeff McKee send. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> yep, so the goal now is to hover all the way up Stone Tower. No hook shot, no algae of emptiness, just blast mask. <laughs> yep. Well, maybe not just blast mask. We've got Please. some new unfriendly keys to work with. Yeah, luckily you can use enemies like Keys to speed up this hover a little bit. And since we're mostly going up and not like across, we can get full height hovers from the Keys, so each Keys hover saves about 15 seconds. Gotta, manip gotta manipulate as many as you can. Yeah, and that's you why this part... Yeah, go you ahead. Can't, can't always manipulate them to be to your favor, but... You can manipulate him pretty well. Yeah, there's a reason this part took us three months to get through. <laughs> Luckily you can do some climbing like this to speed up some sections. Yeah. Back in the old days when they just hovered pretty much from the bottom to the top with no breaks, it was like an hour long hover. We've cut it down quite a bit since then, but it still is a little lengthy. And RTA Stone Tower climbs about 25 minutes long. We cut it down by quite a bit here. But yeah, if you need to go to the bathroom, now's your chance. If you need to do some grocery shopping. If you need to get a shower. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you want to go watch a movie. If you want to go to sleep. Yeah, so this is the part where there's really no way to manipulate that keys, but he'll be back. It's a keys.
I wish I had Cookie Clicker open right now. Cookie Clicker deleted my save data and I was sad. You should be happy about that. I probably should be. <laughs> Is it possible to mega flip off Blast Mask's explosion? Technically, but there's nowhere useful to do it, since you have to interrupt the roll with like either rolling off a small ledge or rolling into a slippery slope. And at that point, you could just do uh, a recoil flip, which is just as good. What's happening right now is climbing up Stone Tower with the Blast Mask. Yeah. There is a limit to how high this keys will go, by the way, so eventually we're not going to have his help anymore. I think he's still got one or two more hovers in him. No, Gigo, it's not reverse dungeon order. Reverse dungeon order is bad for task route. So, chat, how was your day today? was fine up until five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it'll be over soon. <laughs> Yeah, at least we get to listen to the, mu the best music in the game during this. Yeah. Total amount of re-records? I can actually... I don't remember offhand, but I can check real fast. You don't need as to go fast. As decides to open. Take it's your time. It's like 105,000 or something. Somewhere around there. How was my day? My day was okay. Up until five minutes ago. Up until five minutes ago. The record count is 105,454. Uh, yeah, we had desync. We had to 
redo like half of this hover because of a desync. Yeah, Yumi's finished the really long part of this hover, and then he sent it to me and it desynced right at the start. <laughs> So I had to go through this frame by frame twice. Uh, that that number of re-records, the hundred and five thousand, that's like essentially the number of save states used. Yeah, it's really test. higher than that because we did a lot of our testing stuff on other files. Hundred and five K for just the hover. <laughs> the emulator keeps track of that number automatically. And it took us about ten months to make this task. Test was made on Bizhawk. We're almost there. You mean if you didn't answer what color your shoes are? <laughs> A color. Low percent is based on the items you obtain, so like getting an item then losing it later doesn't count as having a lower item count. Yeah. Also, uh, this ledge is grabbable, so we'll be able to skip some hovers by turning Zora to grab it. You were grabbing in a specific spot so that we get a quick pop up. Saves a little bit of time. Yeah. I don't remember how many more it is. It shouldn't be more than like one or two more, I think. Alright, yeah. Alright, and uh, don't blink. I blink. So you use ball time stop to activate all three block cutscenes at the same time, so a block comes down in front of you, and then you use time stop to get onto it before it goes back up, so you can ride it up. So that block trick is a very sudden change of pace, and now we're back to hovers. Yep. <laughs> Keese is annoying. He always flies back to that corner after every attack. The bottle is on Zora's B button. So I can't get... We can't get optimal height hovers off this Keese because we need to be moving towards the block. So we have to back clip away from it. You need height and distance from these, so if you go for a optimal height hover, you won't make it to the block in as many hovers. People don't do Q's hovers in RTA runs, but they do more blast mask hovers. Spoilers. Wow. 
Oh, oh, is it over? Yep. It's over. Yep. So, yeah, a key snag a flip at the end there. Yeah. Just 14 minutes. Saved 11 minutes over RTA. <laughs> Alright, so now we're to a dungeon. Something exciting. There's a clip to this part of this sunblock you can do with a long jump and. If you dive into the water, you get a pretty good speed boost, which you can use for a bonk super swim like this. I think the speed of that super swim is like 17 or something. And this room is pretty crazy. There's a lot of camera manipulation here. Oh good, more hovers. Okay. Skipping as many blast mask hovers as possible though. That was actually pretty cool hovering off those enemies. So, two blast mask covers for that room. Precise jump out of bounds and jump slash there. Nice. This room's also neat. You can use these updrafts with high speed day, big class, and you can barely make this one with a jump slash recoil, which saves another blast mass cooldown. So your spawn position after this fight is actually based on where the Garo Master is and not where Link is. So to not waste time I had to actually push the Garo Master into a good position after the fight. Died. Dang. I I apologize for this next part. <laughs> Y'all dungeons no doors has already beat you to it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, zero day stuff is happening here. Yeah, so you can use human items as Deku, which means you can shoot lighters with that switch. And because Deku is tiny, you can kind of just shoot to the ground if you aim down far enough. <laughs> this is going to be an in. A good inverted stone tower temple. <laughs> oh, what time are you at right now? Uh, one oh four thirty-four. Okay. I think I'm synced up right. Some more zero day. Yeah, uh, for that part, you save again as Zorlink. Uh, you turn into human. That lets you use Zorlink's B button, which is fish, which you use to dupe over the Deku stick, because you need that for later. And you put on and take off Zor Mask to get Sword back on B, and you use that for Song of Time storage. Yep. 
I tried really hard to find a way to get across this room without a Deku flower, but it's just barely not possible. Oh yeah, we're also on the opposite side of the temple that RTA normally goes on. So, we're doing something completely different for this run. I haven't seen this part of Stone Tower in a speed run in like 10 years. <laughs> so there's a round clip you can do right there. And where we are now is we're in the room right with the uh, boss door. And there's the uh, ground clip BK skip in here. So it's a lot faster than going around the other side and doing hovers to get up. Nice. And this twin mold is amazing. Yeah, all I'm gonna say for this twin mold is whenever you use the Kokiri sword as Deku Link. It does the same amount of damage as the Great Fairy Sword. That's it. And how exactly is Deku using a sword? So uh, we did the Zero Day again as we saved as human and then turned Deku. So the game is reading us as human, even though we're Deku, so we can use humans' items. Like light arrows and the sword. It's also important we don't run out of magic. If you run out of magic, you can't shoot arrows anymore. So you need to have more than zero, but less than enough to shoot light, another light arrow. Yeah, the reason you can shoot arrows as Deku is that whenever you use the bow as Deku, the game doesn't check to see if you have arrows before it fires one. It just checks to see if you have enough magic to fire a Deku bubble. I guess because the game just doesn't expect you to use bow as Deku. It assumes if you're shooting something, it's going to be a Deku bubble. Uh, the Ocarina pull was to get rid of Song of Time text and let a little in-game time pass. If we didn't do that, we would get a day transition as soon as we loaded into Iconic Canyon. So this is the first dungeon beat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're getting both to order and we got Twin Mulch Remains.
Where is everyone? Hello? Hi. Sorry, I was sleeping. <laughs> Same. Alright, cutscenes are over. Yeah, so... We wanna go back to Clock Town. We don't have Song of Soaring, so Song of Time is the best way to do that. This is still gonna start in the mayor's house, right? Yeah, it's nope. gonna start in the mayor's house as long as we have owl safe, uh, owl safe storage active. Under the snowballs, so you don't have to use blast mask on them. I love the link not moving his feet in ESS. <laughs> More song storage. Yeah. It's in this run a couple times. Oh, are you hessing? Oh my god, this is... Oh, okay. I was, I was thinking change, you were gonna hess through the whole thing, but... Okay. You can't get off that slope. Dude, that's so, still pretty cool. So we're coming over here. There's a grotto, and there's like... A ring of three snowballs. And we're gonna go in there for a trick lovingly named Stick Crap. So to do this where you have to get a stick, and then catch a fish in the stick bottle, so we have a stick count of one. Then save with Song of Time just before picking up the other stick, and pull out Ocarina to cancel the text. And then we get the stick, equip it, as Zeroth Day happens and reverts the stick back to a bottle. And then it updates the C button after that with a stick. So we have a bottle on the stick slot, and a stick on our C buttons, and that's stick crap, and what that does is, if we use Song of Time, it will not delete our stick. More zero Day stuff here. And this one we're gonna use it to, uh, dump. Uh, to dupe a bottle over a human B button. And when you do that, it dupes a bottle over the ocarina. That's important for a couple tricks later on. Yeah. And now we need to get into Snowy Temple. Keys is the most important keys in this run. <laughs> yeah, so you need the Hess here to resist getting blown away by the wind, and also you need a Hess to be able to climb the slippery slope in front of Snowhead Temple. Also, ISG is used to keep us from falling off the ledge when the wind blows. We also need to, uh, we need to pull up our song storage right before entering the temple, and save late enough that Zeroth Day won't happen, actually. So, we need the sword back, and Song of Time brings that back. But, if we had Zeroth Day in here right now, that would actually cause a soft walk later. Whoa. And this is my favorite dungeon. I've never seen that. 
No, we don't. Uh, there's gonna be lots of ice tricks. Oh, yeah, and that was an ace leg -like clip through the door in the first room. Clips through the ice and lets you open it without melting the ice. Hmm. So there's a wedge clip. And that skips going up the wall, which saves a blast mask use so we can use it later. Yeah, the way that the yeah. ledge clip works is you target a wall at the same time that you're grabbing a ledge right next to a wall, and it turns Link towards the wall, which like moves his body out of bounds. Some more ice tricks. Yeah, keys don't count as items because you lose them when you play a song of time. Uh -huh. Actually, those ice recoils almost saved enough time to. We almost beat the Blast Mask timer on that one. And the, also the recoil through that ice is English only. And that's a ridiculously precise jump over there without a jump slash. So, a trick coming up here. This was suggested by GNS. So we need light arrows and we're gonna action swap with Tattle Text. Tattle Text appears because we don't have the Ocarina technically. And when you do action swap with Sword, it gives you an extra jump slash in the air. So you can just grab a weird bit of collision past the snowballs. for a trick coming up. That was where the soft lock would come in. If it's zeroth day and you play song of double time, a text box comes up saying that you got the fire arrows and you soft lock. And you know what time it is now. Yeah. We tried to cut this one down, but like, we had this idea to go on top of that door frame by the wizard robe room, but it didn't save any hovers. This dancing was almost synced to the music, and I'm disappointed you didn't actually sync it to the music. Yep. I usually task with the sound off, so I couldn't tell. Summer's almost done, but you need one more blast mask use for the boss key skip once you get up there. There's more room to play around up there though, so waiting will be less boring. So it's just kind of this weird spot I found here. You can kind of just jump over and over again for some reason. I 
so here we're using the same trick we used to use Light Arrows as Deku early on, but we're using it to use Deku Stick and Light Arrows. And now we're waiting for Tile Text because we're going to do another action swap. We need that to melt Goat without the Fire Arrows. Alright, so we did action swap from light arrows to Deku Stick. That lets you shoot lit arrows, which are like the kind of arrows you get when you fire an arrow through a burning torch. And we can use that to melt the ice around Go. So that's basically what everything is for. We need stick prep so that when we use the Song of Time storage, we, our stick doesn't go away, so we can do that action swap. We need our ocarina duped over, so that Tattle will try to talk to us for that. It's kind of a mess trying to unfreeze him, but that's all to skip fire arrows. Originally, I thought you needed to break the Deku Stick here. Um, turns out you don't. Uh, the reason I thought that you had to was because um, if you you if you save the game with zero day and you have any kind of ammo in your inventory, like Deku Sticks or Rupees or anything like that, then the game will delete your save file. And uh, so I thought we needed to get rid of the stick uh, to prevent that. It turns out if you have <clears throat> A bottle duped over your stick slot, uh, you don't need to do that. Um, it doesn't waste any time, but just something. Yeah, the bow and quiver are considered two different items. Yeah, so Deku is important to be able to use the light arrows and arrows without a quiver or bow. So back to clock town again. So now we're going to head on our way to Great Bay again, but there is a consequence of something we've done, which is that since there we have a bottle over our ocarina, it considers us to be in a first cycle state, which means there's basically nothing in Termina Field, which means there's no lever to hover off of to get over the fence, so we actually have to do a slow hover for once. I think this is three hours. Yeah, it's three. I should mention, uh, when we started this task, a quip swap hadn't been found yet. 
I was discovered like Exodus discovered that like while I was working on Snow at Temple boss key skip, so we had to reroute a lot of stuff after that to be able to include it. So we will be doing equip swap for Azora eggs. Was the plan before that to actually get all seven of them? Uh, the plan was kind of weird <laughs> before that. Uh, yeah, you do some zero day stuff to dupe one egg, and then you get. Wait. Okay, yeah, you catch all three eggs, use zero day to dupe one egg, and then you go back to um, Pinnacle Rock to get three more to get seven. Yeah, it's weird. Chat will like the humane fish drop there. Fishy has a new home. <laughs> We can't do ocarina items since we don't have fins, but uh, there's this clip here. Uh, people said it was only possible on the top one in the back. Apparently that's not true. Yeah, we use that clip to void out and return to the entrance faster. Also lets us take a heart of damage, which is good for later. Yeah, so this is a quip swap. You hover over one item in your inventory, move to either the map screen or the mask screen, the mask screen in this case, and then when you move back to the item screen, you hold a direction and try to equip on the first frame possible, and it ends up equipping the item you were hovering over, but on the item slot that you first moved to uh, on the item screen again. So right now he's equipping the egg over the bottle on the ocarina slot, so it's not getting rid of the egg in the stick slot. So we can just keep duping eggs over and over. Taking damage from the blast mask during this. Yeah, it's the same trick used to do big pose in OOT. So we don't have the ocarina, so to start the cutscene to learn the song we have to use bottle time stop. After we start the cutscene we pause buffer to delay it, activating, and then blow up with the blast mask to die and skip the cutscene. Yeah, and this way you get the song as soon as the cutscene starts and the death interrupts it, so you get the song, skip the cutscene. And that's New Wave Bossa Nova, our next item. And also, because we don't have the Ocarina yet, in order to store Song of Time here, we have to do an OI dive. Oh, 
Okay, so this trick is kind of complicated. You save the game as human, turn into Zora, so the game thinks you're human, which puts Zor um, Kokiri Sword on your B button, and Kokiri Sword is Zora, lets you use Zora fins. So use that to boomerang some Deku Nuts. Come over to this water, we get the some weird swimming glitch that delays uh, the nut pickup. And then, so when the nut pickup is delayed, you can manipulate what item the pickup gives you by walking in front of certain objects. So we swim in front of the 50 rupee chest and that makes the pickup give us our ocarina back instead of getting nuts. Hi, that, Unius. That fish swim was the tree's idea. And you can also skip this cutscene. So there's one frame to pause and then you can song a double time to skip it. Um, the reason we swam out into the deep water earlier was to reload the area and um, uh, make it day one again so that Song of Double Time wouldn't soft lock. Yeah, and again, the reason that uh, he had to do that GIM to get the Ocarina is because there was a bottle over the Ocarina slot in the first place, which causes some bad side effects like nothing happening in Term of the Field and, you know, not having an Ocarina in the first place is kind of bad. Yeah, and, and it's so, actually impossible for us to beat the game without Ocarina since yeah. when you try to play with the order, it well, loads the giant's cutscene, just like doesn't work. So then just like getting that nut in the water without actually picking up the nut and then going in front of the chest manipulates the item to change it to Ocarina when you get it, and so Ocarina's back. Mm -hmm. And didn't actually get nuts. So you might notice this turtle's bob like bobbing up and down in the water. That's not just visual, he's actually moving up and down. And he moves up and down a lot, so we have to wait a little bit to put on the Zora mask. I think I got the height difference of how much he moves, and it was like a little over twice Link's height that he moves up and down. Uh, some people may know that there's a boss key skip in Great Bay Temple in the first room by clipping into that ramp and then doing a recoil flip to the boss loading zone. You need bombs to be able to push yourself into the ramp. I had an idea to do it, but in doing that I discovered something kind of dumb about this game. So the idea was to use the hitbox of a bug to push you into the ramp instead. But as it turns out, if you find bugs in the wild, they have a hitbox, but bugs dropped from the bottle do not have a hitbox. Kind of a cool trick here. Neat. And yeah, so has to skip tattle text there. And we're gonna do the boss key skip from here instead. With, uh, ledge clip there. And if you swim in OB water, you normally void out unless there's floor below you. So you can swim along a fairly precise path towards the boss loading zone in order to get in. And that movement down the hole, as much as it doesn't look fast, it actually was the fastest way.
One more item left. Yep. Something kind of weird is that turtle has like an immense hitbox and it actually pushes you a little bit when you play the ocarina there. Time to finally go back to Swamp and actually beat uh, Woodfall. Yep. Nice fidget spin. And nerds. Alright, so here we're gonna use the mini baba to get return A to get past the big octos. We couldn't carry the Hest or a Z slide through that poison water, so we just have to back walk the rest of the way. And you can skip this owl text here. Yeah, by pulling ocarina and spinning. There was another method we were trying to get, where you could have like some really precise camera angle positioning. But over like three weeks, myself, Tree, and glitches and stuff were unable to make it happen even once. And that method ended up being faster anyways. And so you can skip the awesome yeah you can skip the cutscene by doing song of double time right before the cutscene starts. Chat's probably gonna like this. Isn't this the D? It's like two and a half seconds, Gigo. Human to Deku for uh, being able to use arrows. Mm -hmm. 
Oh man, Deku ISG. <laughs> So the only reason we need there is just to make this platform move and take off Deku Mask and put it back on there since we were still technically human and going into uh, Deku Flowers he would, would blank our B button. So we have to fight this guy with Deku Bubbles. And you can't, uh, it's impossible to go fast enough to beat him up the wall, so you do have to get him on his way back down. Yeah, one thing that's important to note about the arrow usage in this run is only Deku can, Deku can use arrows. Because of the lack of a quiver and, and the regular bow. So for this boss key, is this... is it impossible to do a boss key skip or is it just faster than a blast mask boss key skip? I'm pretty sure it's impossible. Uh, even if it wasn't, it's a lot of hovers, and we've witnessed yeah. Blast Mask hovers a uh, lot. I, I would imagine it, it's probably too long to just do a DK skip being faster. Uh, equip swap with Deku Stick over Ocarina there. Since we're dumping the stick bottle, we need it. And so we have to do an OI dive off of this ledge. Uh, I don't exactly know what the deal is, but it's impossible to do a normal ocarina dive off there. He just always pops back up on the ledge. I just got 100% TAS flashbacks. <laughs> Alright, so this last room is pretty awesome. Nice. So, it's really precise to land on that pillar without, like, falling short or flying off the back of it. And then on top of that, you have to dodge the red rupee, because... Uh, if we get the red rupee when try to do the trick we're going to do, it'll delete our file. Then the doll was going to get owned. Oh man. The bomb flower strat. So, what's so special about that bomb flower? So, Adola is weak to the bomb flower explosions, so. They like. A single bomb flower can pretty much almost kill him. And that's a giant's cutscene skip. You confirm song of time as you're getting it, and reset the game. And this is the final cycle. I think they want you to do an any percent task, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> backflip up onto the ledge there, Skip's going to get the dog so you can ISG off of him. And this is the final Blast Mask cover. The reason for spawning in the mayor's office is there's a trick way earlier in the run where you try to save at an owl statue. It's a hidden owl statue that isn't normally supposed to exist. 
as you fall out of bounds, and when you do that, when you play Song of Time and reset and load it that way, then you always start at the mayor's house. And so here comes the end of the long cutscene. Yep. Uh, someone asked earlier what are all the, the major items that were skipped, maybe we should go over that. Uh, the biggest items skipped are probably like bombs, bomb bag, uh, bottle, fire arrows, bow and quiver. Uh, hookshot. Yeah, hookshot. Goron mask. Powder keg. <laughs> the most important item. <laughs> hey gamers. Hey. Hi. Hey. A special guest appeared. I just wanted to say hello. Alright, hey. No, that, that, that's it. Later. Alright, see ya. <laughs> nice. It's a shame we could have used the story right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the cutscene where if we didn't have the ocarina, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, doesn't it like teleport you out into Termina Field? If you, if you try so. it. Yeah, it does. It tries to load the first cycle Termina during this cutscene instead of the cutscene version, and that messes it up.
Hey, that's not Skull Kid. <laughs> the Blast Why Mask has this? served us well. What's we going on here? Something. Got some unfinished business. So a little known fact, you can store, you can do a knockerina type with a slash like that, the thrust attack. And so you stored Song of Time while on the moon. Yeah. Yeah, we desynced. Show's over. And finally, the Majora fight. Yep. And so what was that final zeroth day for? Uh, Deku, Arrows, and, uh, Great Deku Sword. I also have to see up there to shoot the mask because Deku is a terrible aimer, and if you target the mask and try to shoot, he'll aim, like, two feet below the mask. Nice. But yeah, Deku is actually OP in this fight. At least under these conditions. Yeah, so Mask has, I think, 14 health, so two jump slashes does it, since a Great Fairy Sword jump slash is 8 damage. And Incarnation has 30 health. Uh, weird thing is, there's like a two hit cap on each time you stun him. So you have to stun him twice. And time. But yeah, that is Majora's Mask low percent. Late split. <laughs> Dang. The actual exact time is 1.59.01. That's including, like, uh, task timing with the last text box and stuff. What was the RTA timing again? Uh, I can check real fast. Or was it? RTA timing. Hey. 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 I just wanted to say, very cool task. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. I agree. Uh, RTA timing was 154.42. Alright. Okay. That beats the RTA record by about 50 minutes, is it? Yeah, about 47. that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Alright, so anything you guys want to say? Um. I don't know. Alright then. Uh, I guess, like, special thanks go to uh, GNS for helping with, like, route and trick ideas for this run. Uh, Jimmy for finding some stuff and being, like, the only runner of this category for, like, a year. Um, Fox for finding a bunch of the tricks that were used in this and giving us advice on a couple sections. And Butter, probably Butter, for... Uh, suggesting the last route change that made this route possible on N64.
You got anybody you miss? Uh, do you want to mention the last one we have in our special thanks section? Sure. <laughs> Was a special thanks to Dracana for frequently bullying me into working on this. Aw, uh, bullying's not nice. It made it happen, though. Nah, uh, he deserved it. <laughs> oh yeah, gotta give special shoutouts to Enop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do an exhibition? Was this run not enough of an exhibition for you? I think this has, like, most of the crazy stuff you'll see in this game. By the way, Yumi, shut up. <laughs> Dang. I didn't even know he was in this Discord. <laughs> Owned. Get low. All right, and that's it. So you guys want to watch the credits or or what? <laughs>